your latest novel is being turned into all adults here into a television show. We're working on it. Are you working on it? You're writing it? I'm I'm writing it and we'll see. Um, Apple bought it and so now That's um, amazing. Yeah. I mean we'll see. You know, I I, I think I don't maybe yeah, I'm, I'm, knocking, to I'm it. knocking on I'm knocking on something because <laughs> I have it right here, a wooden desk. This is Open Book with Jenna Bush Hager, and I'm so happy. I have my friend, Emma Straub. She has her book, All Adults Here. It's out in paperback. Emma, have you ever been asked the question if there's one classic that you haven't read that you feel guilty about? Do you ever hear that as a writer? People ask me that so often, and I think that they expect me to like, you know, sheepishly be like, Moby Dick or whatever. That's exactly like, what I was thinking. But, but the truth is, no, no, no. I think that I am lucky that there are books that I just haven't had the moment to read yet because that means I get to read them now as a 40 year old and not as like an 18 year old who was maybe assigned it for a class or something. You know, I think that, I think that if we can take shame out of, of reading, we would all be so much happier. But will you read Moby Dick ever? That's the question. Sure, sure. Maybe. You're gonna read Moby Dick? It's entirely possible, Jen. Okay, I'd like you to email me with the book report. I'm not, look, I'm shaming you. I, 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 when you asked that question, Moby Dick was what came to my mind, because I'm like, I'm not, and it's referenced so much, and my oldest daughter was like, well, what's Moby Dick about? And I'm like, hmm, it's about a whale. Uh, it's an epic, you know, but and she's like, you haven't read it, have you? And I was like, no. Nope. <laughs> and I'll just go ahead and state it here. I don't think I ever will. And you know what? That's fine too. <laughs> okay. Your dad is a writer. He writes mysteries and suspense horror books. Well, did you read any of your dad's work? Is it, <laughs> is it, were you horrified? <laughs> were you scared? Um, you know, I, I wish I could explain it. Like, I wish I could, I wish I could go back in time and see it because I remember taking one of my dad's books um, called Coco, which was published, I think, in 1990, which was when I was 10 years old. I remember bringing a, like a little mass market paperback of that to summer camp with me. And this book, I mean, it's like, it is dark. It is pitch black dark. <laughs> I just remember being like, <laughs> in my little bunk, like just happy as a clam. I wanted to see what he did, you know, I wanted to experience it. And um, so, yeah, I started reading his books when I was very young. Um, and I, th I mean, I think, I think about this a lot because, you know, obviously I, like my dad, am now a writer with kids. And I think that I, I understood my dad a lot through reading his books. Mm -hmm. not, not because, like, not because they were all personal or, or autobiographical, but just because I could see what he was, I wanted to see what he was thinking about. Um, and I hope that my, that my kids someday will, will have that sort of experience reading my books too. So you love to read. It was part of your everyday. And I think you said something that I think is so true. It was like, and I think this goes with the shame. You have this new blog, which I'm obsessed with. I'm giving it to everybody called Reading is Magic. And um, and you said that that it was just part of like your DNA. You saw your parents read. It wasn't pushed on you in a way that felt like severe and that you said that that's not the way to do it. But was there a book that made you want to write? Well, I think I think the books that, that made me want to write were, were probably the mysteries. Um, like when I was maybe in like, say, say like fourth to sixth grade, like that kind of like you see like scholastic book fair zone, you know? I was reading like Christopher Pike and Lois Duncan and like Nancy Drew and all of those books. So, but now will you ever write a mystery? Like do you have that dark side in you somewhere that could use or not really? No. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, so right now I am I'm really close to finishing a draft of a new 
novel. And I mean, I'm at this point now where I don't know if it's any good yet. I don't, you know, it's not, I mean, it's sort of in pieces, um, but it's, it's a, it's time travel. It's a time travel book. And it's, it's a lot about New York City in the 1990s, which is, you know, when I was a teenager. And so it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's darker. It's darker than my, than my previous books, but it's, it's still not a heist. It's still just about like love. <laughs> You're like, it's darker, but it's not really. Your latest novel is being turned into all adults here into a television show. We're working on it. Are you working on it? You're writing it? I'm, I'm writing it and we'll see. Um, Apple bought it and so now- That's um, amazing. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. You know, I, I, I think, I don't know, maybe I'm, I was supposed to I'm knocking on, I'm knocking on something because <laughs> I have it right here, a wooden desk. But now, so you're working on it. Do you have dream um, actors for to play these roles? Oh man, I mean, with, so, you know, Astrid, Astrid is my favorite character to like pretend cast because, you know, she's in the late sixties and I just think about like, all these amazing yes. women, like, like, like Holland Taylor, yes. or like Gorney Weaver or Meryl Streep or, you know, they're just, yes. there's so many women of, of, of that generation who are just perfect. Incredible. And, and who I could watch all day, yeah. you know? So, I was thinking Diane Keaton. I'm not sure why, but I just think she would, right? Any, they would, so, so you don't get to actually cast it, do you? No. You're writing it for them. I don't get to do anything. <laughs> what are your favorite books that you would recommend that everybody, and I know, listen, it's not Moby Dick, there's no shame in that, but yeah. what is something you feel like everybody should read before they're, before they die? Okay. Whew. Oh man, that's hard. I know. It's hard. Okay. I, I'll, let me let me think of a few. I guess uh, Middlemarch, George Eliot. That is one. That is a classic that to me is a hundred percent worth every minute you spend reading it. Pride and Prejudice. I would say. Yeah, but but then there. I mean, there are so many. There are so many newer books too. Oh God. I mean, yeah, I, I, so, but some of them are silly, you know, I, like I'm, like, I feel like, you know, if you never read any David Sedaris essays, your life would be just a little bit less funny. You know, the book you picked that, that I think I would put on my, like, everyone should read it is the Kevin Wilson. Oh, I love that nothing, book. Nothing, nothing to see here. I can't get over that book. I think the reason that it's, that it resonates to you know sort of across the like parental line is because it's it's about a woman who sort of finds herself in charge of these kids you know it's not it's not it's not the the story which i am very interested in but not everyone is of of a mother who's like oh god he is such a brilliant writer i know well should we just leave it with that all right always a pleasure jenna okay, thank, thank you. you emma bye everybody